Hi friends and welcome to the channel. Containers have become quite popular for doing software development in recent years, but you might be wondering what they're all about and specifically how they work in AWS. And that's what this video is all about. This will be a little bit different than what we normally do on the channel. This one will be all theory, but I'll include some links in the description to other videos with hands-on. Let's get started. First, what the heck is a container and why are they even a thing these days? Well, they solve a couple of different problems. One is that you might have a developer who's working on their local machine, building an application, testing it, and of course, everything works just fine. But then they go to deploy it to a testing environment or production environment, and nothing works. That's most likely because they have a different configuration or files or dependencies on their local machine that aren't present on the server they're deploying to. So containers are a way to bundle everything up that the application needs so you can deploy it anywhere and everything just works. This means it'll work anywhere on any machine without the usual compatibility issues that we have with deploying directly to a server. The other benefit of containers is that they're much lighter weight and a lot faster to start. To understand that, let me do a quick explanation of containers versus virtual machines or servers. With virtual machines, you start with the infrastructure. This is the physical machine that has a hard drive, memory, and a processor. On top of that, you install an operating system like Windows or Linux. Then on top of that, you have what's called a hypervisor, something like VMware or Hyper-V as examples. This basically abstracts away the hardware from the physical machine, which lets you create multiple virtual machines on top of one physical machine. And this is really the technology that makes cloud computing even possible. Then on top of that, you have your virtual machines. I'm only showing two in this example, but there could be dozens or hundreds, depending on the capabilities of the underlying physical machine. But essentially, each VM is a slice of the underlying hardware. And because your apps won't be able to run directly on hardware, each virtual machine needs its own operating system installed as well. Again, something like Windows or Linux. But as amazing as it is that we can even do that, the problem is the operating system takes up a lot of space. Maybe one gigabyte of space on the hard drive. It also eats up a lot of memory and processing power. It's really expensive overhead that's eating up those resources of the physical machine, and it's going to be required on every virtual machine. You might also have to pay a licensing cost for each operating system as well. And then on top of that, you have your app with its various libraries and dependencies and configuration. So that's a really high level look at how virtual machines work. And if you've done anything with EC2 instances in AWS, that's exactly what's going on behind the scenes. Now let's contrast that with containers. You can kind of think of containers as mini virtual machines, if that helps you to get the concept. But let me explain a little bit more how they differ. Again, starting with infrastructure, the physical machine with hard drive, memory, and processor. And then similar to VMs, you have a host operating system installed on top of it. And then instead of your traditional hypervisor, you have a container engine, which abstracts the underlying operating system from the physical machine. This means that each container gets a slice of the underlying operating system, which means that you don't need this layer here, having to install separate operating systems for each container like you would have to do with VMs. And that means you don't have to run a bunch of OSs eating up the valuable resources of the underlying physical machine. And then your app and libraries and dependencies and so on run in the containers. So like I said in the beginning, this is why containers are lighter weight and much faster to start because you don't have to boot up virtual machines and operating systems every time you want to spin one up. The most popular technology for containers today, and it's the one used by AWS, is Docker. And there's two terms that you're going to hear. There's a Docker image, which is a read-only, unchangeable template or blueprint that you use to create a Docker container. This is only created once, and these images are going to be stored in Docker repositories. So you could go out right now and find one for Java or Node or Python or what have you. And then the Docker container is basically a running instance of the image. So you take the image and you create multiple containers from it. As it relates to AWS, you might have something like this. On an EC2 instance, you're running four Docker containers, maybe two for Java, one for MySQL, and one for Node. And all of the dependencies and other things that are needed for each container, those are all bundled up in the container itself. Now let's talk about the container services in AWS. First, we have the Elastic Container Service, or ECS. Not to be confused with the similar looking EC2, which is the Elastic Compute Cloud, or the instances we've talked about already. 
It's used to run, stop, and manage Docker containers in AWS. It integrates with a lot of other services like IAM, load balancers, auto scaling, virtual private cloud, and more. It's proprietary or created by AWS. Then we have the Elastic Kubernetes Service, or EKS. This is Kubernetes as a service, if you will, on AWS. If you don't know, Kubernetes is an open source container orchestration platform, which basically means that it handles the deploying, the scaling, the management, and scheduling of containers that you need to run your app. It was originally built by Google, and it has a really large community and support. So EKS is basically Amazon saying, okay, if you like Kubernetes already for what you're doing, then you can use it on AWS now. And AWS handles all the Kubernetes architecture parts of clusters and nodes. Again, it's not built by AWS, but it is very popular for working with containers and they support it now. There are two ways you can run either ECS or EKS. And by that, I mean two different ways to set up the underlying infrastructure that the containers will run on. You can run them with EC2 instances, here you have to provision and maintain the EC2 instances that the containers run on, and then ECS starts and stops the containers. Versus with Fargate, which is another AWS service, this is a serverless solution where AWS handles the underlying infrastructure for you. You just choose the CPU and the memory that you need, and then provisioning the instances and maintaining them, all of that's taken care of for you behind the scenes. It's the much easier option and is quickly becoming the more popular solution. And then finally, we have the Elastic Container Registry, or ECR. This is essentially where you store your Docker images. And remember that images are basically templates or blueprints that the containers are built on. So you create the image, you store it in ECR, and then the Elastic Container Service, or Elastic Kubernetes Service, pulls the image from the repository and builds containers from it. So something like this, you have your images built and stored in the Elastic Container Registry, maybe one for Node and one for Java or any other number of languages or platforms. And then the Elastic Container Service, when it needs to build a container, it'll grab the image from ECR and create that container from it. So that's it for this video. I know it was super high level and very theoretical, but hopefully you have a better understanding of containers in general and then some of these specific services on AWS. If you want to dig into more detail with some hands-on demos, check out the links in the description, and thank you so much for watching.